Educators, please welcome Miss Jessica K. Hello, Miss Jessica. Hello, Miss Jessica. Yeah, you are still muted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Good morning. Okay, fantastic. Um. Well, I say good morning. It's morning for me. Uh, I'm joining from Spain, Madrid. Uh, it's eight o'clock in the morning. I know it's the afternoon for you. Um, nice to meet everybody. Nice to see everybody. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes, clearly. Yep. yep, great. Thumbs up if you can see. Yeah, can everybody hear me well? Thumbs up. Fabulous. Um, okay, so today we're going to look at project based learning, as you all know. However, let's start a little bit with some warmers. Um, these warmers are great for all levels, uh, secondary and primary. So hopefully they'll give you some ideas. So to start, we're gonna play the name game. Okay, so my name is Jessica and I've created an adjective with my name with the same letter. I am joyful Jessica. Okay, so this is a great way for the beginning of the term if your students don't know each other very well, just for, and also to help you remember everybody's name. Um, I would like you to do the same for your name. So having the first letter of your name with an adjective with the same letter. So my first, my name is Jessica with a J. So I have chosen joyful with a J. So I'd like you to do the same and then just type it in the chat box. Okay, we have some answers here. Great. From Miss Ima, incredible Ima, Miss Jessica. Oh, great one! And also, and also from Mr. Greg, um, I am Gregorius Gregory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also, I am fabulous Fernie. Yeah, nice great. one. Fabulous. It's one of my favorite words. I am curie cute. I am smart sauce me. Wow, that's cool. Okay, we have some more answers here. Okay, just a few more. I am marvelous Mary. I am Jay Z Jonathan. <laughs> I am adorable Agus. <laughs> oh, fabulous. <laughs> I am wonderful, Winnie. Wow. Okay, great. So everybody has the idea. Now, what you can do in your class is that you can also have your students remember everybody's name. So you could have everybody in a circle and then everybody has to remember the adjective and the name of everyone participating. Uh, obviously today, because we are so many, it wouldn't be very practical. Okay. Um, another nice warm up activity to introduce yourself as the teacher um, and then the students can do the same afterwards is facts about me. So I'm going to tell you some facts about me and you must ask the correct question for it to be correct. For example, this is a fact about me. What would be the question? Can you see any correct questions, Ocha? Not yet. They are still typing about the name. <laughs> yep, so what would be the question so that my answer would be Jessica? Okay, we have here from Mr. Jonathan. What is your name? Perfect, okay. So this is the correct question. What is your name? And my answer is Jessica. So in the activity, your students are practicing question formation. They are not trying to guess what the answer is. They're trying to guess the question to the answer. 
Okay, so I'm going to tell you some more. And Ocha, if you think you can see the correct question, you let me know and I'll see if they are correct. Okay, yeah, sure. Hugo is the answer. Okay, we are still waiting. What question might be the answer is Hugo. That's it, exactly. Miss Trina asks, who is Hugo? I think that's not the, um, the that's correct not question. That's the correct question because, because, the, because answer... the answer is Hugo. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Budi Widodo says, what's your pet name? Uh, I don't have a pet. <laughs> okay. And Mr. Miftah, Mr. Rahmi, what's your brother's name? Matthew. Okay, and here we have Miss Yeni Lee. What is your son's name? Hugo. My son's name Yay. is Hugo. So correct. Well done. Okay, let's do another one. Now is Manchester. Mm -hmm. Manchester is the answer. Miss Yulika, where did you from? I am from Manchester. Very good. Great. Okay. December. What is the question that the answer might be December? Okay, Miss Deppy, when were you born? Uh, I was born in December. Fantastic. Well done. Okay. Good. Yeah, doing really well. Well done. Okay. Toast. Okay, now we have toast. What do you think the question is? Okay, here we have from, where is it? Miss Yulika, what's your favorite food? Uh, my favorite food is maybe pizza. Okay. Mr. Jonathan here, what do you usually eat for breakfast? Um, I don't usually eat breakfast. Okay. But that question is close. <laughs> we have a question here from Miss Anissa. What's your son's favorite food? Uh, milk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we have from Miss Diane. What do you like to eat for lunch? Um, a sandwich. Okay. And here from Miss Mary, what do you eat for dinner? Um, oh, many things. Pasta, usually. Okay, here again from Mr. Jonathan. What was the last thing that you ate? Oh, very good. The last thing I ate was toast. Great, Perfect. Mr. Jonathan. Good. Um, <laughs> I was looking for what did you eat for breakfast. So mm -hmm. depending on your answers, you can make or help your students practice the past tense, the future tense. Um, you can make this flexible. And finally, three. Okay, three. What is the question that the answer might be three? Still waiting. From Miss Sylvia, how many siblings do you have? I have three. Well done, Miss wow, Sylvia. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, yep, good. I have two brothers and a sister. Um, so very easy for you to do this. You can put it on your whiteboard in the classroom and then your students can do it together. You, they can have it on a piece of paper and they can go between twos or threes. Um, and again, it's very flexible. You can change the tense that they're practicing. Oh, OK, never mind. OK, another easy one, um, a nice introduction. Very good for lower levels for primary. It's a picture dictation. Um, so I think Ocha has said that you'll need a pen and a paper for this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I'm going to describe a picture to you. And I would like you to follow my instructions um, and try to draw the picture. Okay, so please educators, please prepare your pen and also your paper. Okay. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if everybody's ready. Okay, we have some educators already get their thumbs up. Great. Okay, so 
Um, on your piece of paper, I would like you to draw a rectangle, quite large, a large rectangle. Okay, thumbs up if you've finished the first instruction. Okay. Okay, we have some indicators. Great. Inside the rectangle, I would like you to draw a circle on the left side. Inside the rectangle, I would like you to draw a circle on the left side. Okay, again, thumbs up if you've done the next instruction. Fantastic. Okay. Above the circle, on the outside of the rectangle, I would like you to draw two diagonal lines. Above the circle, on the outside of the rectangle, I would like you to draw two diagonal lines. Okay, again. Great. On the right side of the rectangle, next to the circle, I would like you to draw three horizontal lines. On the right side of the circle, inside the rectangle, I would like you to draw three horizontal lines. Okay. And finally, on the right side of the rectangle at the top, I would like you to draw three squares. On the right side of the rectangle, on the top, I would like you to draw three squares. Okay, when you think you've finished, I'd like you to hold your paper up so I can have a little look at your artistic talents. Okay, uh -huh. a little bit closer to the camera. Okay, we have okay, so many pictures well. here. Okay, I'm going to show you my picture to see if you can compare. Yay, is there anybody draw the, uh, the correct drawing? Yeah, the diagonal lines is the most difficult. <laughs> Okay, good. So this is a really nice activity for very young learners. You have to be very clear with your instructions and the images have to be very simple. Um, you can do it for more advanced. So if you look here, you can do something like this, which includes below, backwards, on top and things like that. Um, you don't have to create these images yourself. If you go into Google and type picture dictation, there are many of them. Okay, so no, no extra work for you, which is always good. Okay, so I think now we can start. I think the majority of people are included. Um, so let's have a look today at project-based learning. So I just want to go through the aims of today. Okay. So firstly, we'll just be looking at what is project based learning and why it's effective for our students. We'll go through some example tasks and also the step by step instructions of how to organize a project based learning activity. The importance and how to do feedback and assessment, which is sometimes lost in project based learning. And then finally, we'll end on a discussion in the Q&A part of the session. Okay, 
So firstly, we're going to look at what is project-based learning. I'll give you a few moments just to read. Okay, um, just put me a thumbs up if this is clear to you, if this is confusing, any words? Yeah, we've got some thumbs up, have we, Ocha? Have we got any thumbs down? I think I don't see one, but if you're okay. uh, confused, you can also use the raise hand feature, yeah, Bapak Ibu? Exactly. Uh, we're going to go into more detail now anyway, if you are a little bit unsure. Okay. So here I have some aspects of project based learning, some advantages, and they have some words missing. I'm going to give you the words and in the chat box, I'd like you to choose which word corresponds with the correct number. So, for example, one and then plus the word you think is missing. OK, so read um, the sentences and fill in the correct missing words. And also don't forget to type the number, yeah? Exactly, yeah, with the number so we know which one you are choosing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have here from Ms. Uh, Mifta Hurrahmi. Mr. For uh, the number one, push themselves. And also from Miss Devi, number one is push themselves. And also mm -hmm. number two is real life problem. Does everybody seem to agree with that, Ocha? Yes. All Fantastic. of the answers say that. Well done. Easy peasy. Okay. <laughs> uh, have a look at question three and four. Okay, now already number three and four, what is the correct word? Okay, we have here number three, some of them says interest, and number four is kills. Okay, is everybody more or less in agreement with that? Yes. Fantastic, well done. Okay. Uh, now the final one is not missing, uh, but I'd just like you to read it. Okay, so project based learning has many advantages. It's not only about speaking English or language learning. It's also about communication with other people, real world problems or solutions. And it can be used in English class, but also many other classes. Uh, I know it's very common to use this type of thing in science and also in maths. Okay. So maybe in your classes you do projects, but exactly what's the difference between project-based learning and projects? In project-based learning, the teacher needs to give some parameters, okay? There needs to be some guidelines for students to follow in order to solve an issue or a problem or a complex task. Um, it's not just the same as making a poster. There has to be some parameters of why you're making the poster. What is the poster helping to solve? Okay. So basically, for project-based learning activities to be project-based learning activities, they should include HOTS. Now, give me a thumbs up if you are familiar with the term HOTS. Yeah, we've got some thumbs up here. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular at the moment to uh, hots and lots. Um, so let's just take a little look at that. 
Uh, here you have Bloom's taxonomy. Um, again, if you're familiar with HOTS, you're probably familiar with this. Um, he created this pyramid of the steps in which we learn things or the steps that help us to learn things, that help us to retain the information in our memory, which in English is one of the biggest problems. Our students usually don't remember very much from class to class. Um, so we really have to do these steps in order for our students to retain that information. Okay, so I'd like you just to look at the pyramid. Um, starting with the purple level, uh, I'd like you to choose which skill or which part of the process belongs with the purple part of the pyramid. Uh, Otto, if you can tell me who is, uh, what people's answers are, that'd be great. Okay, we are still waiting for the answer. What is the word for the purple part? Yeah. Yep. So for this level, here we go. So for okay. this color, which one of these parts of the learning process? So it's the first part. Okay, we already have four answers, and all the answers is remember. Okay. Okay. Let's have a look, see if you're correct. Correct, mm -hmm. well done. Yay, okay, so the yay. easiest and the first part that students have to do is remember. Okay, so what do you think is the next part of the learning process? So once students recognize and remember a word or a phrase or a grammatical structure, what is the next part in the blue part of the pyramid? Okay, we have some answers here say understand. Okay, does everybody more or less see, agree with that? Yeah, most of them say uh, understand. Okay, fantastic, well done. Great remembering your Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so after students have remembered the word, understood the meaning of the word, what is the next part of the process for them to retain the information? Okay, we have answers here now. It's apply. Is that correct? Let's have a look. It is correct, well done. Um, so this is usually, we usually test how students apply the information with things like a gap fill activity or choosing between two answers, which is the correct answer, um, which is basically a lot of what our books do, our student books. And you'll notice that in our student books, remember, understand, apply, is basically where they finish. Um, they don't usually push into HOTS very much. Uh, after apply, what do you think is the next part of the learning process? Okay, we already have some answers. Analyze, and someone says evaluate, but most mm -hmm. of them say analyze. Okay, uh, yeah, I understand why this is confusing. Um, those who said analyze are correct. Um, so, Students really need to study the information uh, before they can do the next step. So that's why analyze is first. So we analyze and then once we have studied the information, we can then on to the next part of the process, which is. Okay, evaluate. We have some answers here. Most of them says evaluate. Fantastic, okay. Uh, students can evaluate. That means they can make decisions about themselves now with that information. They, can, they know how to use it. They know when to use it. And because of that, they can do the final part of the learning process, which is? What is the last part? Create. Yes, yeah, exactly, okay. So it really is a process and you really have to include these steps into your classes. Not all of the steps, because that would be too much, um, but definitely some in certain classes. So this part of Bloom's taxonomy is the HOTS. Okay, so analyze, evaluate and create are the skills that your students really need to use the information and it shows that they have good understanding. It's true that many of us feel that we don't have time and we generally focus on remember, understand and apply. But really, those are lots. They're low order thinking skills. So we need to push ourselves as teachers to include HOTS where possible. 
And thankfully, project-based learning always includes POTS. So it's a fantastic way to make sure you're including that in your lesson plan. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at some example tasks. Um, here, this one I've said is for primary. Uh, however, I think you could easily apply it to secondary if you adjust it. Okay, so this is the task that I would give my students. Uh, eat this, not that. And the task is to create an information leaflet. I would ask my students to make sure they include on the task foods which are healthy or unhealthy, the nutritional facts about the food, the amount of sugar, fats, carbohydrate, uh, maybe some advice on why people should and shouldn't eat foods, things like, uh, I don't know, cavities in your teeth, putting on weight, bad for the heart. And then maybe some advice on how people could eat healthy. So this isn't just asking my students to remember specific words or apply specific words. This is asking my students to analyze information, evaluate information, and create a leaflet, okay? It's very much a hot activity. Uh, you're going to get this on a handout, so you don't really need to write, write all this down. Um, I think it's more important that you read the slides and understand. Okay, here's another one for primary. Create a school party invitation. Okay, I will tell my students to think about which grades will attend. Okay, is it going to be for grade one, which would be very different if it was for grade six. Okay, uh, where the party will be, will it be in the school? Would they do it somewhere different outside of school? Maybe the school is very small and doesn't have the space. Um, food and drink that it could be at the party. So thinking about uh, practical things students could eat like pizza maybe would be easier to organize than say soup. Uh, activities they might do, again, if it's for grade two, the activities might be very different to the activities that grade six would do. And then obviously it's an invitation. So they have to know details such as start time and end time. Maybe you could also include a dress code. Maybe it could be fancy dress. So again, all of these thoughts um, are, doing, are including the hot part of the pyramid. Okay, evaluating, creating. Okay, and let's have a look at one for secondary. Um, these are usually more complex, obviously. Um, okay. Okay, so something a bit more uh, lengthy, a little bit more complex is to write a proposal. Um, our secondary students, really they shouldn't be doing things like posters at this point, they should be doing more challenging things. Um, again, I always give my students parameters. So what type of transport? Is it going to be buses, trains, uh, tram? Um, who's going to be your primary user? Will it be people traveling to work? Would it be school children? Would it be tourists? Um, what you think would be an appropriate price for the people in your city, you know? Uh, 3,000, a million, who knows? And then also the schedule of the public transport. Will it run more frequently in the morning when everybody's going to work or will it be continuously the same all day? Okay, so these are just my ideas, but obviously we can change these to fit your students and their knowledge. Again, we create, we evaluate, we analyze. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions and get your opinion. Uh, now we have a basic understanding of exactly what project-based learning is. 
what is your opinion on project-based learning? Uh, Otter, if you could find someone who wants to share their opinion with the group, that would be fantastic. Yes, sure. So educators, you can um, share your opinion by using the raise hand feature, or you can also type it on the chat box. We are going to read it. Or if you want to unmute yourself, please do. Is there anyone? Okay, I think here we have Miss Rina Kania uh, sharing about the example of the PBL, uh, which is organized trash. Okay, yeah, it could be an example task. Um, if you're maybe doing things on recycling, uh, environmental issues. <clears throat> but this moment, I'd really like to know what your opinion is not example activities, but how you feel about project-based learning. Um, do you think it's effective? Uh, do you think it's difficult to organize? Just more your opinion on it. Okay, Miss Rina says it's challenging. Definitely, yeah. And also here we have Miss Nurul Hayati. That's great. It, it can push the students. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely does push students. Great. And also from Ms. Mr. Hurahmi, problem solving. Yep, it includes problem solving, exactly. Uh, for me, oh, sorry. Okay, we have some answers coming up. From Ms. Evita, it may be difficult for students who have poor vocabulary. Yeah, it could be. If they can't communicate very well, definitely. We'll have a look at how we can, um, solve that soon yeah and also we have from miss fernalia pbl requires time and planning yes definitely it does it does mm -hmm. and also from mr jonathan it is rather similar to tbl or the pbl could be followed up or combined with tbl it will be good for a multi-lesson project Yep, yeah, fantastic, great. Uh, Task-based learning, TBL, uh, is maybe shorter. Um, you can do it in one class, whereas project-based learning is over a few classes. And yeah, definitely about multi-level classes. It's a great way to combine everybody um, and not always have weaker students behind everybody. You know, everybody can go at their own pace. Yeah, fantastic. And also here we have from Miss Christina, it's exactly it leads students to be creative. Like, oh, amazing. Yep, exactly. Uh, it's definitely some independent learning happening. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Okay, so has anybody done any project-based learning in your classes? Obviously not necessarily English class, uh, which is my area. But have you done any in your science classes, maybe history classes, uh, maths classes? And was it successful? Did you enjoy it? Okay, I think uh, the answer is still for the first question. Yeah, we are still oh. waiting for the. Yeah, no problem. We can wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, here from Miss Epita in my English class. Uh, they learn on writing for students. Okay, writing, yeah, this project based learning can be writing. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else? Any answers for the question? Anybody else tried it? Okay, here we have from Miss Fernaria. Our school has an annual project thing, but it's not always enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great when schools organize things like them themselves. Uh, I know that it's very popular in schools to uh, organize projects. And also we have from Miss Susan. Yes, it's always fun if it is well prepared. If not, it can be a disaster. <laughs> oh, I totally agree with you. Yeah, if you don't prepare it well, it's, yeah, it's a nightmare. And from Miss Treta, we, we've been doing it since four years ago and it's okay. integrated learning. Wow. Right, yeah. Okay, it's great to know that some people already have some experience with it. Um, you can share some ideas. Uh, and finally, 
Obviously, this is different to the type of learning, which is with your books and re repetition and things. Do you, as a teacher, think that it's useful? And why do you think it's useful? And some people may think it's not useful. And why do you think that way? You're still waiting for the answers. Yeah. Maybe um, the educators can say it's useful or not, and then the reason behind it. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> I think the educators are still typing. Okay, yeah, here fine. we have Miss Nurul Hayati. It's very useful because it can make students more creative. Mm -hmm. And also from Mr. Jonathan, yes, very useful, even critical. Learners need to actively use their knowledge or skill. Passive knowledge fades quickly, yes, that's right. Definitely. And I think at the moment, critical thinking is a big part of the education system. Um, so at any moment, we can include it. And also here we have from Miss Yulika, yes, useful. Students like experiments. <laughs> Yes, they do. Yeah, I think students enjoy it in my experience. From Miss Sasmi, big yes, because they can design something, learn teamwork and thinking creatively. Great. So we don't have anyone saying it's not useful, Ocha? Not, not anyone. Okay, it's a good job everybody uh, joined this meeting then. Um, okay, let's continue. So I think it's important, as we have all agreed, that the planning of a PBL task is really where its success uh, starts. So we're going to have a little look at the steps there are when trying to create uh, a project-based learning task. Again, you'll get this on a handout, so it's not necessary for you to write this down. Um, OK, so step one would be firstly to decide on the project and create the parameters for that project. Okay, uh, we'll look at some ways we can do that soon. Um, could anyone suggest an answer for what the next part of the process would be? So once you've decided a topic and given your students the parameters, what then would happen? Otto, if you could read out a few Suggestions, that would be great. Yes, yeah, sure. We are still waiting for the answer. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have from Miss Rina, explain the parameters. Uh-huh, very nice. And also from Miss Sally, um, launch the mission. What, sorry, can you say that again? Launch the mission. Okay, yeah, mission launch. A few steps before that, I think. Okay, here we have from Miss Susan. Explain and discuss it with the students. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so it would be scaffold students. Um, we'll talk about the meaning of scaffolding uh, soon. Maybe some of you already have some knowledge of that. Um, but yes, it, explain and discuss is included in scaffolding. Um, after scaffolding, it would be giving the students some preparation time. Okay, so after you've decided the project, scaffolded the students to do the project, given the students some preparation time, what do you think would come next? We have from Mr. Abdul, monitor. What, sorry? Monitor, maybe monitoring. The monitoring, students. okay, good. What is the next step? Any other suggestions? After the student preparation time, what should we do? Mm -hmm. From Ms. Sasmi, assess the outcome. Okay, very good. That is one of the steps. Mm -hmm. And also from Mr. Jonathan, monitor and guiding, encouraging okay. students to relax on whether they are still in line with the aims. 
Very good. Yeah, definitely support, feedback. Uh, okay, so it would be this, it would be the presentation. So after students have given been given some time, then they would be asked to present the work, to send the work, uh, a deadline. And then finally, what many of you have touched on is grade and feedback. Um, now we're going to go into each of these steps in more detail. Um, some of the suggestions that you have made are included within these. So I think everybody is on the right track. Okay. So first, students need to decide on the topic, or you need to decide on the topic. I think you can decide as a class, um, but obviously you're the main decider. So we can take inspiration from many places. Uh, firstly, one of the easier ones is to take inspiration from the class book. So here I have my class book. Uh, this is English in Mind, it's for uh, grade four. And the topic, as you can see, is sport. So maybe after we have covered all this information in the class, different types of sports, my students are thinking about sports. I have already given them some um, vocabulary and things about sports. So it would be a nice way to lead on from that. I would create a task myself, maybe something like this. Okay, again, we, we know it's creating something because it's invent. And now I'm going to give my students the parameters. They have to think about the numbers of participants in your class. So if you have a class of 30, maybe a game of chess would not be appropriate because it only requires two players. Uh, unless you played mass chess and everybody was playing. So you need to think about the number of students in your class and what would be an appropriate sport for them. You would need to think of the rules of the game. Any necessary equipment, you know, bats, balls, uniform, goals, maybe swimming pool. And then obviously where in the school it's going to take place. Is it in the gym? Is it on a field? Uh, is it on a court? Um, again, all of these parameters are helping students to think critically, to analyze, evaluate before they create. Now, I think this could be primary or secondary. Um, so if you are using a book at the moment which has sport, which is a very common topic in English textbooks, uh, as is food, as is education, as is transport. So many of these activities, you can, they can be very flexible between primary and secondary if you make them less or more difficult. Okay, so class book we can take in for in inspiration from. We can also take inspiration from current events. So what's happening at the moment? So what's happening around your city, uh, your town, or also the things that are happening in your school. Okay, so obviously we're all very aware of the current events of COVID at the moment. So it could be a good time to link that with a project. Um, this would be my idea. Okay, so this I would say would a little bit more advanced for a secondary class, um, creating an action plan. Again, always giving my students the parameters, the parameters. Okay, so which, which actions might come first and later? So for example, all the schools closing might come first um, and then maybe I'll travel uh, aeroplane travel might come later. Also things like wearing a mask or washing your hands can be very immediate, whereas some things would need more thought. How your action plan would affect public uh, schools, public places, businesses, the travel industry, 
public transport. And obviously it's an action plan, so it has to have a timeline, okay, of the actions that you're going to take. Again, this is quite advanced, definitely for secondary. Okay. We can also take inspiration from celebrations. So birthdays, um, Easter, Christmases, um, celebrations that you have in your school, like anniversaries, special days. There are so many days now in schools that we celebrate. So here's one of my ideas. Organize a school disco for your grade. Okay. Again, um, I'm going to make this one a little bit more problem solvy um, by including a price list. So this is very nice, especially for students who are aware of prices. Um, but I, if you make your own price list where things are a thousand or two thousand rupiah, then your students don't need knowledge of real world prices. They can just use your price list with a budget. So if I give my students this budget and they have to create the disco using this budget. Okay, so on my price list, I might include different locations and how expensive it is to rent those locations. The prices of food and drink, uh, obviously also what's appropriate, like we said earlier, is it pizza or soup? Music, uh, how expensive it would be to hire a DJ or just have a Spotify playing from mobile phone. Different activities, games that could be played, maybe competitions. And then obviously the prices of decorations and things like that. So this allows students to combine a little bit of mathematical skills as well as the communication, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then another idea for inspiration could be from your students' interests. So you all know your students, uh, you know what they talk about, what they're enthusiastic about. Um, I know things like K-pop and things are very popular in secondary schools. Um, so using your, school, your students' interests, you can create a project-based uh, activity. So I'm going to give you a few minutes now to think of just the question and the parameters of make a video is the task. Um, and you need to think of the question that follows that and what your students would need to think about. So I'm asking you to base this on your students' interests. So if your students are into K-pop, maybe you could make a video on the history of K-pop Think about the origin, um, the first, the first people to bring out K-pop songs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I just want you to take a few minutes to generate a task, no, project-based learning question, starting with make a video, and I'd like you to include the parameters. I'm going to give you three or four minutes to do that, so you know, no pressure. Um, and Otter, if you could read out some examples once people have some ideas that would be great okay sure Okay, we have here one um, question here from Miss Dian. It's about what is the topic of the video? Um, the topic is your choice because it's based on your students' interests. So I think, think it about is, your... It's one of the parameters, I think. So yeah, so if you think about... Uh, yeah, exactly. It's one of my parameters for this <laughs> project-based learning task. Um, think about your students and what interests them and therefore what you could design specifically for them.
Okay, we are still waiting. Yeah, okay, no problem. Here. I mean, hear from Miss Evita Prakti. Make a video on making funny mask. Okay, great. Um, Miss Evita, what would be the parameters of that task? How would you get students to think to evaluate some information? <coughs> Maybe we can invite Miss Evita to speak up. Yeah, that would be great. Hello, Miss Evita. Hello, Miss Evita, please unmute yourself first. Okay. okay. I think you shown my face. Yes, already we can yes. see you. Is it? Okay, thank you. So what do you think, Miss Evita? You say that, uh, yeah. make a video. Yeah. Uh, I think we have to think about, uh, yeah, my, my student actually is a secondary school. Mm -hmm. So uh, to make uh, them interesting, making this PBL, project-based mm -hmm. learning, by asking them making a video how to make a wonderful mask for themselves. Okay, that great. Parameters, it will be on the interest. Yeah. What would be the parameters, sorry? The parameters will be the, uh, 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 the, 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 certainly I have a block. The colors, the motives, Yes, yeah, the emotions, and maybe the materials. So, uh, this use the mask. Unstable internet. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. It's one I'm, of the issues of the. I'm, I'm in Chanjur, Miss, so it's in West Java. Right, so, we so you are, don't have great connection. Yes. Uh, yeah, very good, very nice idea. Um, I love the idea of creating something. I'd say for secondary students, it should probably be a little bit more advanced. Um, so maybe the mask could be a cultural mask. So does the, does the mask come from Africa or is it an Indonesian style mask? Uh, maybe it's Chinese, you know? So maybe not just funny because it's not really using their analyzing and critical thinking. You want something that's maybe a little bit more advanced, I think, in my opinion. Okay, Otter, do we have any other suggestions? Yes, we actually have so many answers here. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's see. We have from Miss, um, Miss Yuni Ifayati. Uh, hello, Miss Yuni. Maybe we can hear you sharing. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Hello, Miss. Uh, yeah. The things that I um, what come onto my mind when uh, asked to think about one project based learning, mm -hmm. uh, making a video. Uh, I right. ask them to read one a fable story in Indonesia. I provide them some stories, and then. Uh, try to relate since I am teaching in an Islamic school. I want to try to relate that uh, topic into Quran value, into an yeah. Islamic value. Fantastic. I try to uh, ask them to look at some animals' uh, name mentioned in the Quran, mm -hmm. since in our Quran there are so uh, there are many stories about um, what's that uh, animals. Mm -hmm. And then I asked them to write a story using the animals as a character. Mm -hmm. Great. And at last, um, eh, not the last one, the next step, I asked them to write a storyboard. Mm -hmm. So they can imagine uh, in one frame what uh, will be shown on uh, what will be shown in a frame. Let's okay. say the image and also the, what's that? The, the text, the okay. subtitles. Yeah. And they also allow to put uh, voices, their mm -hmm. voice over, and then the last one, uh, they are going to create an uh, a digital story since my student is secondary school and they are uh, familiar with uh, Kinemaster, FIFA video, right. InShot, and etc. So uh, I think the product, the last product of uh, the 
project based learning is the video a digital video uh, uh, <laughs> sorry yeah, video. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah video <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, fantastic. Great idea. I think you would probably need some more parameters in, for example, the content of the story. So, for example, your story must include an introduction um, explaining why. Um, your story must include a lesson that the animals learn, like what a fable mm -hmm. is. So, as I think you're exactly right, but you would definitely need some Sometimes if we just say to students, make a story, it's too much for them, it's too wide. So we have to make very clear parameters on what you want included in the story. Okay, it's just uh, like a kind of uh, writing guide uh, okay. or writing guidelines. Yeah, like guidelines, exactly. We're going to look a bit more closer to those in a moment. Uh, but thank you very okay. much for your suggestion. Maybe we can have one more if there is any more. Thank yes. you so much. Okay. Thank you, Miss Yuni. Okay, I would like to invite Mr. Jonathan. Hello, Mr. Jonathan. Hello. Would you please share with us? Yeah, um, uh, recently <clears throat> there's a video game that all of our grade six um, primary students are raving about. It's called right. Among Us. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so, you know, basing it on what the students are interested in, excuse me, there's mm -hmm. a thunderstorm above my house. Um, I'd ask them to make a video game to introduce this game to people who've never seen it before. Right. Um, I'd probably set a time limit, like a um, three, three and a half minute uh, time limit. Mm -hmm. So they have to be quite um, concise and precise with their language. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> um, they'd need to, Give a very brief overview of what the game is, mm -hmm. um, an overview of you know what the aim of the game is, what right, what, right. what do they have to achieve, um, explain or even demonstrate on video um, some of the basic procedures of how somebody actually physically plays the game, okay, and then great. give yeah, some yeah. tips on how you know the easiest, the best way to win that type Fantastic. of game. Yeah, great. They're great parameters. Uh, I'd maybe also include on who was the audience um, in there, because obviously if you're explaining it to adults, it might be very different than explaining it to someone your own age. Um, but I think that's fantastic. Yeah, and it's great that you chose Among Us, which is obviously very popular in your classroom, so you'll get instant enthusiasm about it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Uh, thank you very much and great. I mean, video is a difficult one to organize. So it's great that some people have some nice ideas. Okay, so now we've thought about our question um, and we've thought about some parameters. I want to look at this idea of scaffolding students. Now let's just have a little look. Um, if we could just see, uh, maybe you can just put yes or no in the chat box is if you have heard the word scaffolding before. Yes, yes, heard of it. Okay, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And if anyone would like to volunteer an answer of what your understanding of scaffolding is. Maybe we can invite Miss uh, Fernalia. Hello, Miss Fernalia. Hello, Miss Fernalia. Yes, hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, my my internet connection is not that great, so that's why I don't have my video. On. Okay. No worries. Yeah. So, uh, it's just basically basic understanding is just building um, and guiding the kids to understanding what is the project's going to be about, how they're about to do it, and what is supposed to be um, appropriate and what's probably not appropriate to be included in the project. Great. Um, giving examples and all that stuff. Amazing, fantastic. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, just to put that on the screen so everybody 
uh, has the time to read it. Scaffolding is providing your students, and this is not only in project-based learning, this is generally in every class, um, clear task guidelines, model answers, as you said, uh, examples, the language they're going to need to complete the task, and then feedback and assessment of the task. So these are all the areas of scaffolding. Um, and project-based learning needs a lot more scaffolding than other things because it is a very free activity that they can, the projects can differ very much. So scaffolding is key really um, to a successful project-based task. So we're gonna have a look at those a little bit more in depth. Um, we're going to look at a task and I'm going to scaffold it and we're going to talk about it together. So this is actually what scaffolding is. Uh, this is where the word comes from. Um, this idea of support, basically. So these things that I think in Indonesia, they're usually made from bamboo um, and they support a building when it is being built. So this way you are supporting your students as they are producing something. Okay. So I'm taking my example, uh, I've taken inspiration from the textbook. This is Family and Friends. Um, it's low level primary. Um, again, houses and places that you live are very common in many textbooks. So I'm sure you have a topic or a, uh, a chapter based on this. I'm creating my task, which is Okay, uh, designing a house. Uh, it's going to be a competition just to give students a little bit more enthusiasm. Um, and then I'm gonna give them the parameters of who will live in the house. So they need to make sure it, there's space for mom and dad. There will be two children, a boy and a girl. There will also be a grandmother who is in a wheelchair and they have a cat. Okay, so here are the first parameters and here I'm providing students, wait a moment, sorry. Um, I'm telling students I want them to include an illustration and an explanation of their design. So these are the first set of task guidelines. Um, for me, I think there could be some more. There might be too many questions after this. So. I would again include this idea of think about how many floors they will need to accommodate the people, how many bedrooms, you know, will the, will the boy and the girl share a bedroom, will they have a bedroom each, how many bathrooms would be appropriate for that number of people. Uh, who will sleep where in the house? Obviously thinking about the mother or in the wheelchair. Uh, will there be a garden? Do you think it's necessary to have a garden? And then finally, if they want to include some design or some furniture in each room to explain, um, they can. So again, it's clear task guidelines to students. Every question they might ask you, for example, when you say, I'd like you to create a house and the hands go up and they go, oh, how many floors? How many bedrooms? That's not necessary because you're going to provide all that information before. So the questions afterwards should be minimal. Okay. So as our previous speaker said, uh, providing examples or models is really key um, in project-based learning. Uh, it's so helpful for students to have a visualization of what their answer should look like okay um and obviously we have expectations and if we don't show them what those expectations are they're not you're probably going to be disappointed with what they produce okay we've just spoken about why they're useful they give students an idea of what they need to do so thinking about our house project, um, what could be a model for this? What could you provide students with in this example answer? Uh, Otter, if you could read out any uh, suggestions of what would be a model for this project with this design a house. 
There is no answers yet. Sorry, Miss Jessica, you are still muted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, anything that that's similar? Oh, okay, here. We have from Mr. Jonathan. If you want the students to make a poster of this, show a poster of a house that has been designed for a similar but not the same criteria. Fantastic. Great answer. Perfect answer. Uh, don't give your students the answers um, by making the exact project, but definitely something very similar. Um, and yet what you ask your students to create, you have to create yourself. Uh, you don't always have to create it. You can find many things online. Uh, so here we go. Here are some of my suggestions. A poster, as Jonathan just said. Um, with a written or oral explanation. So you can do it as a writing task or as a presentation. A little bit more advanced, especially because we're using computers uh, at the moment and uh, young learners are even better at computers than the teachers. You could ask them to make a virtual drawing using a uh, platform on the computer. And again, with a written or oral explanation, or a little bit more um, creative, a 3D model with a house. It's a nice way to produce the work. Again, always with something like a written and oral explanation. Um, we don't just want posters and drawings and models without students pushing themselves to explain and do the critical thinking. So here are some examples. Um, for primary, it could be something as simple as this showing them, okay, this is my house and this is where I would put the explanation. Something a bit more detailed, this whole poster with explanation, maybe they could put different rooms in the house, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, a virtual drawing, you know, something similar like this, very geometric. Easy to create on paint and uh, if paint still exists, actually. Um, and then a few paragraphs on the explanation of the house. Again, this could be just written and sent to you, or it could be done as an oral presentation. Um, this, again, I thought is primary, but depending on the level of your secondary students, you could make this more or less advanced. And then I think it's very important to create a model for a 3D uh, project or uh, using different materials, mixed media, uh, because there are so many variations. Again, students make their house. It doesn't have to be a replica. Maybe that's what your model could show. Um, but at least the explanation would tell you what was inside the house. Okay. So the next part that's quite important, uh, especially in English classes, um, and it's probably the main reason we do project-based learning in English is because we want our students to use language. Um, so once we have given students the question, modeled the answer, we need to make sure that they are prepared with the correct language. So, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to think of what vocabulary students are going to need um, to complete this task. If you just write down some vocabulary topics in the chat box.
Mr. Verisianto uh, says uh, built one of the words that uh, could be included in the project. Okay, yeah, that's one of the words. Fantastic, mm -hmm. build. And also from Mr. Jonathan, names of rooms, pictures, and fittings. Amazing, fantastic. Yeah, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen. Anything more? And also from Miss Fitri, preposition. Prepositions, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, parts of the house, kinds of rooms. And also here we have uh, from Miss Uyeni, construct. Okay, also, yeah, the word construct would be a good one for them to have. Colors. Oh, colors, nice, good, yeah. Furniture from Miss Dian. Very good, furniture, exactly. I think you've said all the ones that I've suggested. Um, so for vocabulary, I put parts of the house, furniture, and obviously adjectives. Somebody mentioned colors, but obviously you might also need large, small, mm -hmm. things like wide, open, closed, um, green. And then some of you mentioned some grammar, but can you think of some grammar that the students might need to include in their um, explanation, either oral or written? What grammar are you going to have to help them with? Simple present from Ms. Nurul Hayati. Okay. Singular or plural nouns. Very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Subject verb agreement. Okay. And also from uh, Mr. Jonathan, also says uh, for the example, passive voice. Passive, okay. Mm -hmm. Present continuous from Mr. Ranga. Okay, present continuous mm, might be a bit. I'm not sure if I would use present continuous for a description of a house. Maybe they are living there, you could use. Um, here are some of mine, um, there is or there will be, okay, so there is a kitchen, there will be a kitchen depending on the uh, level of your students, you could use it has or will have, uh, you want your students to explain, so because and for, so there will be three bedrooms because there are that many people needing uh, spaces to sleep. Uh, some people said some verbs such as construct and build, yeah. And then another person said prepositions. I included it in grammar, but I suppose it is vocabulary. Okay. Sorry if uh, everybody can hear my child screaming in the background of this. Um, okay, so preparation time. So now we've given our students all the tools that they need. So they've got the task, they've got a model, you've taught the grammar, you've uh, taught the vocabulary, they have all the tools they need to start the project, which is, it's a lengthy process. So now they need some preparation time. So we have two parts of the classroom, as we all know. We have the class time and we have homework time. Um, I will, we're going to think now on what would be best done during the class and what would be best done as homework. So I would like you to copy this table onto a piece of paper. Uh, make sure it's quite large or quite clear for you. Okay, once you've finished that, um, I would like you to take a look at these parts of the process or different parts of uh, organizing a PBL. And I would like you to choose, is it best done in the classroom or is it best done as homework? And I'd like you to, you can just put the number, you don't need to write the entire thing. Okay, because it would take too much time. You're going to get a handout later, so you will have the answers. So just put the number in the 
part which would be best. Okay, I'm gonna give you three minutes while I attend to my son. So yes, you can uh, write it on your paper, or if you don't have uh, your paper with you, you can also type on the chat box. You can write only the numbers, so it won't uh, take a long time to write. Okay, we have some answers here in the class time and also homework part. For those who write on the paper, if you are already finished, you can also put your thumbs up using the reaction or on the camera, okay. We have one and also the other. Okay, another already put their thumbs up. Thank you, Miss Vita, I see you. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Mr. Jonathan also showing it to the camera. Maybe uh, while waiting for Miss Jessica, we can also um, See Mr. Jonathan's work. Maybe Mas Rido, could you help me to spotlight? Mr. Jonathan. Okay, here is from Mr. Jonathan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Jonathan. For the other teachers who hasn't finished yet, no worries, we are still waiting for you. But we already have so many answers here on the chat box and also some uh, participants already showed the answers on the camera. Hello. Okay, Mr. thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, my son was having uh, problems getting to sleep. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's check. These are the correct answers if you just want to have a look. There we go. Okay, I think uh, I see many answers is right. Yep, it looks very correct to me. Um, is there any anyone disagrees with anything that you think would be better in the class that I have said differently? One, three, four, six, seven, fantastic. I think everybody looks to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. But there's also uh, other participants who add more in the class time. Okay, like which ones? Uh, number eight uh, from Miss Sally. Okay, so we've got um, number eight could be which for class time? I think it's a little bit of a waste of time to do practices um, in the class time. 
especially if you have secondary students, um, it's better that they organize collaborative things outside using an app um, like Flipgrid or something. Um, and first drafts, I think much better as homework than in class. Mm -hmm. I see Jonathan has said that five and nine could begin in the class. Uh, I think collaborative groups, yeah, you could start off maybe with some breakout rooms uh, where students start uh, sharing ideas just to make sure everybody understands what's happening. And again, research, I'm just, I'm imagining research of people doing Googling, and that might be a bit of a waste of class time if people are sat reading articles on Google and things. Um, however, if you've got primary students that you think research would be quite difficult for them, then definitely incorporate in that, that in class time. And also maybe to model how to do research um, could be included in class time. Uh, but I think more or less everybody's on the same page. Fantastic. Okay, uh, I just want to look again a little bit at the differences between primary and secondary when organizing PBL. So I just want to have a little poll to see, to get an idea of how many primary school teachers we have, secondary school, what type of um, subjects we're all teaching. So I think, uh, Otto, if you can introduce the poll for people to answer, that would be great. Okay, so we are going to have a poll uh, for a minute. Wait, please wait. Hello, Mas Rido, would you please help us to show the poll? Okay, now we, uh, you already see the poll. You can choose the answers. Oh, not what happened there. Uh, oh, oh, I don't know what's happening now. I think you should uh, reshare it again. This yeah. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Is there anything we can help, Miss Jessica? No, uh, it's uh, everything's closed on my laptop, so uh, I'm just won't take me a second. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. See where we were. Yeah, this is uh, what we usually have while doing the distance learning. Yeah, maybe yeah. some of the teachers. Really yeah, I think we're all quite familiar with um, the issues. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, now we can continue. Okay. Okay, so some differences between organizing PBL for primary and secondary. Uh, let's have a look at primary. So with primary, the tasks should be quite simple, um, such as pictures and diagrams, ex like the explanation, just short writings. I mean, for very low, uh, lower primary, it could be sentences. Um, Storytelling is a nice one. Um, I know somebody suggested that earlier for secondary, but it's very common in primary. And the presentations should be very short, uh, you know, one minute maximum. We don't want to scare our students and um, deter them from doing PBL if we ask too much. For secondary, more complex things such as videos, uh, recordings of them speaking, reports, articles, longer texts, um, and their presentations can be a bit longer um, if they have the, uh, the ability to talk in English for a longer period of time. 
primary um, should be individual or pair work. Obviously, primary students cannot um, cannot organize groups outside or use other use apps on the internet as well as secondary students. So it's nicer if you do individual or just pair work for them. Whereas for secondary students, it can be collaborative groups. You can have five or six students and they can organize themselves outside of the classroom. The materials for primary can be simple. It can be pen and paper. Um, it doesn't have to be virtual. It doesn't have to be videos. Whereas for secondary students, they can use things like online apps as part of the project. Some of those apps could be Nearpod. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's very good. Uh, you could use this in your scaffolding to teach the grammar and the vocabulary. Um, Google Classroom, which we're all very familiar with for sharing documents, for uploading videos. Google Forms, very similar. And then for Flipgrid, um, which could be used for them to do their meetings outside of the classroom. Okay, for the final topic of our session, um, I'd like you to unscramble the words uh, to figure out what the session is about. So what's the word might be? Okay, we have Fitback already an assessment. Okay, that's great. Feedback and also assessment. Feedback and assessment. Okay, is there not, uh, any other answer for this? Feedback and assessment. Okay, let's have a look. I think you're more or less correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Feedback and assessment. So let's look at once we've finished the task or during the task, how we can support our students. So firstly, does anyone have any idea on what the difference is between feedback and assessment? You can type it on the chat box. Yeah, that would be great. You can also unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have here from Mr. Ferris. Feedback is like giving compliments. Okay, giving compliments. Yes, if it's positive feedback. Mm -hmm. And also from Miss Evita, feedback is response on lessons learned. Okay. Uh, from Miss Rina, assessment is giving score. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, from Ms. Vita, assessment is acknowledge the result. Great. I think we're more or less on uh, the same wavelength. So, yep, feedback. So, feedback is continuous. Uh, feedback can begin from the first class, from the mm, brainstorming part of the class. You can tell students whether they have done it well, what they need to do extra. It's a continuous uh, cycle of telling students what is going well, what is going not so well, um, and how they can change and advice. So it really is something that you're continually doing. It's not something that only should be done at the end. Um, feedback can be sent just via email. So you can have your students sending you drafts of their presentation or telling you what they have done until this moment. And you can converse just by sending emails like, yes, this is very good. This needs more work, etc., etc. You can give feedback individually. Maybe you have groups and you have weaker students in those groups uh, that find things more difficult. You can give one to one feedback with them. Uh, they could be sending you emails saying, I'm finding it very difficult. Um, and you can just help them as an individual within their group. Or you can do group feedback. You can, you can talk to the group uh, as a whole and tell them how they are going. Um, 
as six, as five, as four, rather than one to one. So feedback is very continuous. It's very um, informative throughout the process. Whereas assessment is at the end. Um, and we're going to look at assessment a little bit now. So for assessment in PBL, you generally want to use a rubric. Um, now, this rubric can be created per task. Um, depending on what your task is, the parameters of how you want to assess students might change. So here is an example rubric that I have created. Uh, I've decided to create four uh, grades. So one being the lower grade and four being the best grade. Okay, and I've decided to include three parameters in that. Okay, so these are my, the three things that I decided to grade. Again, these will change depending on the project. If your students, um, if you've done primary students where there has only been one person doing the project, collaboration and communication may not be included. Maybe communication to you as the teacher. So below expectation for creativity and innovation would be little, a little creative and unique aspect some creative or unique aspects, creative and unique, and advanced creativity and unique aspects. Okay, these are very similar for the other parts. So collaboration, communication, disorganized, inaccurate, information is clear, but it's quite confused. It's correct and clear, and it's well presented. Okay, again, you can create these Uh, now, I know that we don't have a lot of time as teachers, so do not worry if you don't have the time to create these. Uh, a simple Google search and you can find many of them. So you type into Google and then search through some rubrics until you find the one that matches your project the best. You can obviously adjust it and adapt it. Um, but really, you should be assessing in this way. I don't think it's useful to only assess something out of 10 or something out of 20 with no explanation of what parts were better, what parts were worse. I think we need to grade on this, this way, as do Cambridge exams and things like that. Okay. Okay, so I think this is really key that um, students need feedback. Sometimes we give them a project and then we forget about it until you're assessing it at the end. But students are not going to learn unless you tell them, this is not correct, this is correct, this needs work. They're not going to go in a direction of advancing and increasing their knowledge. So it's really important we give feedback. When you're creating your project-based learning task, I think the best thing to ask yourself is, what exactly are my students learning from this? So earlier, someone suggested uh, creating funny masks, which has the potential to be a great activity, but what do you want your students to learn from creating that mask? What is the, what is the objective? And does the task include some 21st century skills, which again is another big popular concept at the moment within teaching, uh, especially the four C's. Um, if you know what these are, uh, could you put some suggestions on what those are in the chat box? What are the four C's, right? Yep, they're part of the 21st century skills. Mm -hmm. Even if maybe you only know one, don't worry about it. Sometimes they're difficult to remember. Okay, we have from Miss Franalia, creativity. Mm -hmm. And also from Miss Tita, communication. Okay. And also from Miss Rina, critical thinking. And Miss Susan, 
add a collaborative. Okay. Any more suggestions? Um, there, uh, there are saying clear and also concise. Okay. Let's have a look. Communication, correct. Yep. Yeah. Um, PBL has lots of communication, whether it's an individual with you as the teacher or a group of uh, people working in group or pair work. Collaboration, again, you're working in pairs, in groups, you're talking about things, you're sharing ideas, you're helping your teammates. As we said earlier, it has lots of POTS, which is basically critical thinking. It's asking you to evaluate things, analyze, and then create. And obviously we need creativity. Uh, all these projects allow students to make decisions on, on their own and create different things. So I think project-based learning really does include the four C's as well as many other 21st century skills. Okay, so if this is what you're looking for, if your school is trying to push 21st century skills, then I think project based learning is definitely something you should be including regularly uh, into your timetables into your lesson plans. So now just to finish off, uh, I think we can have a little bit of a Q&A about project based learning. Yeah, so educators, you can type your question on the chat box about uh, the training or the sharing from Miss Jessica about project-based learning. So please, you can type it in the chat box or maybe uh, some of you would like to use the racing feature. I believe some of the teachers here is typing their question. Okay, so uh, we have a question here from Ms. Miftahurahmi. The question is, what should we do when some of the students are not interested to do the project, Ms. Jessica? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's all part of the introduction of the project. So again, don't choose something that you think your students might not like. Um, if you find there's a majority that do like the subject and maybe a few that don't, then when you choose the groups and how, to, how the students are going to work, then make sure you include some enthusiastic students with maybe some less enthusiastic students so that they pull them uh, into the group. But really, I think you can, you can create enthusiasm at the beginning. Maybe you need to show some videos or maybe you need to include a song. You know, I think you have to create the enthusiasm when you introduce this, the topic. Okay, any other question? Okay, here we have a question here from Miss Sophia. Are the assigns, assignments of PBL considered as summative or formative tests or assessments? Um, I think it would be both. So obviously the summative would be at the end, your assessment, whereas you can do things throughout that would be formative. So I think you could combine both. Okay, any other question, educators? We are still waiting. Okay, here we have a question from Miss Uni. Is PBL the same as design thinking or what makes it different? If it's um, different? Can you give me an example of design thinking task? Um, hello, Miss Uni. No. Can you try to no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, like um, like when we ask uh, our students to, um, let's say, 
uh, writing, writing an essay, and mm -hmm. then uh, during the process of uh, discussion or during the process of the class, we ask them to go some steps, like in design thinking. Uh, I see, I like following the process. I see what do they see when they were when they are provided with the pictures, and then uh, what do they think about it, and then what. Uh, are they wondering about the about that? And then finally, they create uh, something relating on uh, their discussion mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, it, I mean, it, it sounds same? like I don't. I wouldn't say it's exactly the same because I think project-based learning is freer. So it's more you're giving students more responsibility with project-based learning to create something. So you wouldn't. So maybe in their own discussion, they would have design thinking. It, with the discussion with their group, they might say, I see it this way, I think this, this is my opinion. But really project-based learning is pushing students to do that themselves as a group, not really you telling them, oh, what do you think? What do you see? They should be doing that on their own, really. Um, you're pushing collaboration. But well, it, it's definitely included, but I would say project-based learning is, is wider. It's, you know, it's more free. Students have more freedom. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes, here we have from Miss um, Nurpribi. Which topic is appropriate with PBL? I think, uh, what do you think, uh, Miss Jessica? Is all the topics are could be done with PBL? Yeah, definitely. If the topic is in your student book, it's great. If the topic is from, as we said earlier, uh, world events, if the topic is interesting for your students, uh, it really just depends on you um, and what your school sees as appropriate. Uh, I don't really think maybe teaching present simple is a great topic. Uh, the topic should be a subject and you include present simple. So it's not really a way of just teaching grammar. It's really a way of including grammar and vocabulary. Okay, thank you. And also uh, there is a question here from Ms. Evita. Uh, can you give us an example on PBL for subject in mathematics? Oh, I'm not really very good at mathematics, I have to say, um, but a lot of mathematical questions such as um, when students have to deduce the answer, when they say uh, 50 students are in a school and 30% of those students have to eat this and 20% of the students have to eat this, uh, so what could you create on the school menu? So I think really in mathematics, if you're including percentages or fractions, uh, numbers basically, uh, in your question, then it is appropriate for mathematics. Again, I think if okay. you probably did a Google search of mathematical PBL activities, you would find a lot of suggestions. Okay, thank you. And also here, there is a question from Ms. Sally. Does graphic organizer help during the PBL stages, especially for lower grader? Oh, I've never used Graphic Organizer, so I'm not sure. Uh, is anybody, can anybody help with that question? Has anybody used Graphic Organizer and thinks that it would be helpful with a PBL task? Mm -hmm. If there is any teacher who has already done with the Graphic organizer, organizer, you can also share it in the chat box, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so here, uh, this might be uh, from Miss Rina. Is there any success standard? in a PBL process? Say that again, sorry? Is there any uh, success standard in a PBL process? Um, do you mean like grading or do you mean official, like official assessment? What do you mean success standard? What does that mean? Okay, maybe we can invite Miss Rina. Hello, Miss Rina. Yeah. Maybe you can explain more about the question. Yeah, hello. Whoops, sorry. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I mean is, um, I was curious about the, the process. Is it uh, when the process of PBL success, uh, 
is it a standard for it? I mean, the, the formal standard for the teacher also for the student? Um, I think you're creating the standard. There's no official standard that mm -hmm. exists. So for example, Cambridge doesn't have a PBL standard mm -hmm. that you can measure. Um, so really you're creating that standard. Okay. Okay, there's nothing really official. Uh, but like I said, if you, if you create your own rubric uh -huh. of what you expect from students, you know, uh -huh. if you think students can present for two minutes, can collaborate, et cetera, et cetera, you create your own standard. But no, there's no official standard at the moment. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, I think we have uh, one more question here from Mr. Ranga Ahmad. Is it possible to apply PBL for, for home learning during pandemic? Say that again, sorry. Is it possible to apply PBL for home learning during pandemic? Uh, maybe it's uh, like distance learning? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's really possible. Um, as we went through the steps today, and I have, I have set up several PBLs for you during this session, and we're doing this virtually, um, mm -hmm. you would maybe need to do quite a lot of emailing. Firstly, you'd need to put your students into groups and they would need to organize their communication outside of the classroom, okay? So they could do uh, Zoom meetings between them, especially for secondary. Um, and then maybe you'd need to organize one-on-one -on -one with primary. So it's definitely virtually possible. Um, in terms of creating the project, that should be done in a way that can be done with distance learning. So if it's a writing, it needs to be sent to you via email. If it's a video, it needs to be uploaded onto the correct application. Uh, if it is a 3D model, it has to be photos taken of it and sent to you. So just because you're not in the classroom doesn't mean that you can't create good PBL uh, activities. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, I think here Miss Susan is answering the question about the uh, graphic organizer. Oh, fantastic. It will help during the plan, like using web or mind map. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So you'll use, it. so graphic organizer is creating yeah, mind maps, flow charts, things like this, I guess. Okay. Thank you. I Ms. do Susan everything with mine on PowerPoint. So. <laughs> okay, thank you for answering that question for me. Okay, so my, uh, I think that's the end of the Q&A session. So, Miss Jessica, do you have any anything you want to share with the teachers here? Uh, no, just don't be afraid of doing PBL tasks. Uh, I know they take quite a lot of organization, but um, it really does give your students something better to do than just exercises in a textbook, which I know is easy for us, but it's not very useful for them. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Jessica, for your Thank you, time. everybody, for connecting. Yeah, and also, uh, educators, don't worry. If you still have uh, any question, you can deliver your question to the written email and WhatsApp number on the screen. Uh, we have the email address and also WhatsApp number. You can access and contact us through that uh, contact. And also, I would like to say thank you very much, Miss Jessica. Hopefully, by this session, the participants are enlightened and have our mind refreshed especially for uh, about project-based learning. Thank you very much, Ms. Jessica. Okay, 